This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by the Virginia Education Association. An investment in teachers today will pay dividends tomorrow. Dignity Memorial. The Dignity Network provides professional and compassionate funeral, memorial, cremation, and cemetery services throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association for jobs, the economy, and public health committed to advancing health and economic opportunity for all Virginians. Virginia Tourism Corporation, promoting why Virginia is for lovers, lovers of wine and craft beers, the outdoors, beaches, history, music, and more. Fall in love with Virginia at virginia.org. Additional support provided by these sponsors. and by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you. week in Richmond, a very special welcome to Delegate Cliff Hayes, who represents a portion of Chesapeake and a portion of Suffolk. Delighted to have you here, and you serve on the Appropriations Committee, and that's and other committees, but that's got to be one of the, the, the big ones for someone who was just elected in 2016, and they go on appropriations. Not that many people in the beginning of their career in the General Assembly got on that that committee. So interested in talking with you as there's far less than 100 days now before the next session to see what sort of issues you see that you might be working on or your colleagues might be working on, whether they're appropriations issues or, or other issues. So welcome. Well, thank you so much, David, and I'm excited about being here on this morning. Yes. Um, as you think about appropriations, um, there's some hot issues that will be dealt with there. There always are, but I guess one of them has to do with the, the tax conformity issue that you'll be working on. Have you uh, determined what your perspective is on what needs to be done on that tax issue? Well, we know that uh, there are a number of issues, David, uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, that we'll, we'll be faced with during this next session. But quite honestly, any and everything is tied to the budget in yes. some form or fashion. And so it comes down to priorities um, and what needs to be addressed. Uh, but first, we have to take the temperature of what the economy is doing, what our resources are looking like. Uh, and as you mentioned, this whole issue of the taxes, uh, the new federal tax code and the implica implications that that has had on the Commonwealth. Uh, and what adjustments or what priorities might need to be addressed in that regard. There are new uh, issues on the table that we haven't seen in recent years. We have a number of issues that were modified or cut in years past because in response to the economy uh, in the 2008-9-ish time frame, 2010 time frame, there are a number of uh, areas that had to be modified or cut uh, to adjust for so that we could have a balanced budget. Well, now that the economy yes. is revving up uh, and unemployment is down, um, all indicators are that things are solid. We just had a report to come out uh, just a month ago to simply say that that index actually looks at the strength of the economy over time and what pro the projections and forecast is going forward in uh, coming months. All indicators are saying that things are pretty strong. Layered on top of that is this whole notion that the Supreme Court has ruled that states now can begin to look at and collect uh, internet sales taxes, yes. whereas in the past uh, that has been an issue about bricks and mortar, where those businesses actually are physically located. For that to open up, now uh, what does that mean 
in terms of the revenues coming in uh, to the general fund. So all of those areas, as you know, David, you've been around a long time, you know that what we're dealing with are unlimited demands with limited resources. So it just comes down to priorities. And, and I'm sure you'll be hearing and probably have been hearing from teachers who will say we were some of the ones that had those uh, reduced revenues coming to education back about a decade ago and, and now wanting more funds and many others who will be approaching you. But also, I'm thinking about your uh, CIO of a technology firm. Yes, sir. Uh, and, uh, it moves me to ask you about broadband because yes, broadband sir. may not be the issue in your district in Chesapeake and Suffolk, could be, but in many parts of the Commonwealth, as you know, there's there's real lack of broadband. Mm -hmm. So from what, thinking about your day job yes, in sir. technology, how, how critical is it that we, for the growing economy, that we have a strong broadband access? Absolutely, and I think that that's a small piece of a puzzle of where we need to focus and put great emphasis is on technology in general, whether that be uh, setting the stage for growth and investment in technology in the Commonwealth as a government entity, but also create an environment where the private sector and those businesses in the area of technology can thrive as well. And so when it comes to broadband, we're talking about uh, proficiency, we're talking about productivity right. um, with our uh, private sector or our own entities when it comes uh, to access to data for information, productivity, job creation, um, even training, if you will. Um, broadband is going to have an enormous impact. Our investments in broadband and creating an environment for those investments is going to have a tremendous uh, impact. We know that we're now in what we call the age of the Internet of Things. Everything, no matter what vocation, no matter what area, whether you're talking education, public safety, road improvements, uh, ship repair, uh, bringing products into our ports, all of it rests on the infrastructure of technology. Broadband is just a major portion of that, of making sure that information is able to flow in, flow out of our organizations and to give our students in the classrooms uh, opportunities. We're talking about health care uh, when it comes to broadband. We're talking about how electronic medical records can be shared in some of the areas of our commonwealth that may not have mm. physical hospitals, doctor's offices, et cetera. We can begin to share that information uh, much more easily so that we can diagnose uh, individuals or Virginians with their health care issues. Um, the, I mean, the list just goes on and on what we can begin to do when it comes to broadband in our classrooms, our ch students at home, et cetera. You mentioned health care, and I was going to bring that up because you serve on the Health, Welfare, and Institutions Committee. Yes, sir. And between health care and appropriations and expanding health care through expanding Medicaid, you probably have some issues to, to wrestle with on, on those in the upcoming session. But uh, as one who supported, as you did, the expansion of the, the Medicaid, how do you see that moving forward and being uh, helpful to people in your district and throughout the Commonwealth? Well, David, I can tell you in the 77th, uh, that will provide tremendous benefit for the citizens of the 77th House District. And I'm just speaking to that district. But studies have shown that uh, Virginians will benefit across the Commonwealth of Virginia, not in only remote areas, but across. No matter you're talking uh, Hampton Roads area, the Central Virginia area, um, Northern Virginia, uh, Southwest Virginia, everyone will benefit uh, from this measure. Uh, with uh, health care and Medicaid expansion in the Commonwealth, we're talking over 400,000 mm -hmm. families that will now have access to affordable, uh, quality health care um, that did not have it before. And so that means 
hospitals will thrive and do a lot better economically because maybe um, that certain percentage or level of charity care might have been provided before and we weren't able to uh, have those hospitals uh, receive that type of revenue, but now because of Medicaid expansion, we'll be able to do that. We'll be more jobs available, uh, more people having access to quality health care as well as the Commonwealth now being able to reap the federal and draw down federal dollars to the tune of over $5 million a day uh, is what the estimate is that we will have in the com Commonwealth. And with those resources, now we can begin to re leverage those resources as well to provide uh, other resources in our general budget. The other committee you serve on is, deals with local government issues, county, cities, and towns. Before our time expires in this conversation, uh, what sort of local government issues have, do you see that you all would be wrestling with as you move forward? Well, the local government area um, of concern is always um, that uh, the measures that we provide or the instructions or uh, the laws that are pushed forward that affect local government, always they want to make sure that they're not unfunded mandates. Yeah, and so if that's we're talking the big about... words, the unfunded mandates. Yeah, so uh, as we're trying to create an, a more quality... Uh, environment for the Commonwealth and all of the localities across the Commonwealth, then we're talking about also being able to provide resources to go along with it. So when we began to talk about safety in our school systems, when we're talking about the quality education that our students need to have, when we're talking about examining our schools and making sure that they meet the standards and the requirements that we would like to see when we're talking about transportation and getting the kids to and from school. Um, those requirements that we place on them, uh, we wanna make sure that we're funding those measures as well as the salaries that are deserved by those in the classroom and our administrators as well. Dr. Cliff Hayes, we really appreciate your being on and, and we've got another 30 seconds. And, uh, What's, what's maybe an issue that you're going to be personally working on this upcoming session? Well, as you know, and as you said, my area of expertise is in the area of technology. I want to see us invest in cyber and to make sure there's a, a great emphasis on that. Blockchain technology is something that uh, I think going forward in the Commonwealth we need to put a great emphasis on. We're talking about being able to, in a real-time situation, and open data, open gov, be able to provide the information that our citizens own. It belongs to them and they deserve. Well, thank you very much for being on this week in Richmond. Look forward to continuing the conversation. Absolutely. Thank you, David. Thank you. Yeah. Delighted to welcome Delegate Jennifer Boisco to This Week in Richmond. Welcome back. We've had you here before. Uh, you represent predominantly Fairfax County, a small portion of Loudoun County. And among the many initiatives that you've been working on is broadband access and serving on a broadband advisory council. So tell us what's happening about broadband in the Commonwealth right now. Sure. Thank you, David. I'm really happy to be here. Um, I've spent a, a lot of the summer uh, focusing on broadband uh, issues. In fact, I was just in Colorado for the National Broadband um, State Legislators Conference where I was able to serve on a panel um, talking about what we've done here in Virginia. One of the, one of the things that I focused on last year was a bill that would um, expand broadband in our comprehensive planning, asking localities to consider strategies. Uh, in their comprehensive plans. And I also carried a bill, both of these were passed, that will uh, have a study to look at a dig once policy, um, which when uh, undergrounding various utilities, you'd provide a <coughs> conduit that's large enough so that you don't have to go back and dig up your streets over and over and over again. Uh, well, that fits right into the county, cities, and towns committee that you work on lo mm -hmm. local government. 
It does. Yeah, that's right. And I, I actually have a local government background. I worked as a staffer in Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, where I was at the table as we were doing comprehensive planning. Um, and I understand completely that adding language to, uh, you know, include broadband will help empower localities to expand broadband more efficiently. Well, I know too that your interest is in the people of the entire Commonwealth, because if you were only focusing on you're part of Fairfax and Loudoun, probably you're, you have broadband. You're right. So it, I, you know, I live in western Fairfax County near Dulles Airport, and, and we are lucky that we have the capacity. In fact, we are really the technology hub of Virginia. But I come from rural Alabama where people don't have as much access. And for me, um, it's important to see all of Virginia be successful. And uh, Having broadband is a really important part of that. It's one of the governor's top initiatives as well. And you went to college in what, what some of us would describe as the gateway to Southwest Virginia. Not, it's not really that Southwest in Roanoke, but you know that part of the state as well. I absolutely do. I went to Hollins, uh, what is now Hollins University. I was actually the commencement speaker there this past spring. And, um, Very nice. it, it's good, again, to have a, a different view of the different parts of Virginia. You can. You can, you know, it's just such a vast um, commonwealth with so many different um, attributes. We're having this conversation toward the end of October. Some of our viewers are seeing it just before the election. Others are seeing it right after the election. Fits into another committee that you serve on, and privileges and elections committee. In fact, serving on a special joint Correct. subcommittee that's looking at at election issues and. We were talking just before we started recording about the, the uh, increased number of uh, requests for absentee mm -hmm. ballots, and by the time some of our viewers have shown, they'll see the show, they'll know the outcome, and they'll know whether this was a, a gubernatorial election turnout or even presidential election. But what, what are you hearing now about the, the interest that people have in this election? Well, I can't go anywhere without somebody bringing the election up right now. Um, in, in my community, there, there is a very hotly contested race in the 10th. Uh, the, the 10th district is right outside of my neighborhood, um, and, and there's a huge amount of interest in that congressional district. I think it's so important that everybody realize that their voice really matters. Some of the elections in 2017 uh, were very narrowly decided. In fact, there was one that has become pretty famous um, where it was decided by the one, um, you know, drawing of lots, basically. Um, and for me, having people understand that they can make a difference at, if they would just get involved is really something that we all need to remember. Thinking about, about elections and by serving on that committee that you're working on, going forward beyond this year's elections, do you have a perspective on some things that would Im improve the elections process or improve turnout or what? Sure. Oh, last year I carried a bill for a group, actually it was for a group of college students. Um, right now the way the law reads, if you apply for a, uh, to, to, um, for your, um, Good gracious. Or absentee ballot. Or yeah, or like just to register to vote, register excuse me. When, you're in college, yeah. when you register to vote, you have to receive in writing um, via pub, uh, just postal mail if there's a problem with your, with your application. My bill would have in, in, empowered the registrars to either call the applicant or email the applicant if the applicant so chooses to provide that information so that they would know in a timely fashion that their application was going to be denied if they didn't do something about it. The, the interesting thing is on some college campuses, because they don't use postal mail quite at the level when you and I were in college, students don't necessarily even check those PO boxes or have a really good um, uh, way of making sure that they would get postal mail. And so the, the intent was to really bring the system up to the 21st century. Believe it or not, uh, I was not able to get that bill passed. Um, and, and so that's something that I think is really important, that we, we want more people to be able to vote. We want every citizen 
to be able to use their voice as we were just talking. And so I'll continue to advocate for initiatives like that that are common sense, um, that will broaden the spectrum of who gets to use their voice and uh, I would, I would think that, that so many of the students are so used to using email. They are. That uh, unless they know that, that they're receiving something in the mail, that a check is coming or Correct. something is coming, they would necessarily they don't. Be, be checking a, a, a snail mailbox that often. That's right. And I mean, you hear stories of they don't know how to, some, some students are not even using the mail enough to just the basic things of where to go get stamps because they can do almost everything electronically these days. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just continue that conversation. Yes, yes. Well now, thinking about the upcoming session that will not be that long before and bills are being filed now mm -hmm. and the session convening January 9th, are there other issues that you'd want to mention that you, you're already seeing as something needs to be done and you may be introducing something? Well, absolutely, uh, and a lot of this is uh, legislation that I've carried in the past. Um, at the Supreme Court, you know, we've just seen the new Supreme Court, uh, Brett Kavanaugh, um, on 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 the the bench, and there's a a, a lot of interest from uh, women and medical providers about safe and legal abortion, maintaining Roe v. Wade. Um, I have been involved in that space for a long time. I believe that women should be able to make personal private decisions for themselves and when a woman has made a decision um, we want her to be safe in um, getting that care. So that's that's an issue that I'll, I'll be following back up on. Um, also it, issues surrounding um, driver's license. Who can have a driver's license? And I think you and I have talked about this in the past. Um, we want people on our roads who have taken the test, who right. have right. insurance, who understand what the rules of the road are, and expanding who can have a driver's license. I don't know if you realize this, you can be here legally and still not have the, uh, the ability to get a driver's license under Virginia law. So I'm, I, I've been working for, this will be my fourth year, to continue that conversation, um, and hopefully we will find some resolution on that as well. Those are two initiatives that I care about. Our, our viewers may be wondering, what's, what's the opposition to that? Why, why would someone op oppose someone, like you say, who's here legally mm -hmm. from being able to get a driver's license? What, I'm sure you, you've heard all the arguments, so what, why? I, I think sometimes it just becomes a political issue. Um, Issues around immigration sometimes becomes, become hot button issues that motivate people on the left and on the right. And so um, I, I think it's more a product of that than anything else. We had a, a, a work study group that met in 2016 that really went in and had the sheriffs and the insurance companies and the stakeholders who would be able to benefit from such we really got together and, and talked about this for a, a full year and uh, there was consensus that we should expand who can have a driver's license. In fact, it's not even a partisan issue. There, there are members in the Republican Party who, who not only believe that people who are here under legal presence should have access to a driver's license, but, but believe that everybody who might be interested in driving should have access to it. Again, I go back to the kind of the common sense um, thought of if someone's on the road, I want them to be insured. I want them to know the ro ru rules of the road and I want them to be licensed to drive because I'm on the road and my daughter's on the road and my husband's on the road and I want us all to be safe. Well, that, that's, that's certainly an important issue and I'm sure that's one that you're going you're to be staying after and, and working and sounds like a common sense issue. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. It really does. So broadband is going to still have some attention that you'll be giving it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The elections will still have some attention. Mm -hmm. the, the driver's license. Any, uh, you serve also on the education committee. I do, yes. Before our time's up, anything on education that you see that you'll be working on? We just had um, an education summit uh, with the Senate and the House Joint Committees. and, and uh, 
some of the stuff we came back with are continuing to uh, look at the funding formula. Um, I live in Fairfax County, as we've talked about, and which is one of the most wealthy communities in the Commonwealth. However, in my own district, there are schools that are 80% free and reduced lunch. Mm -hmm. So the pockets of poverty, um, I think we've got to make sure that we address those um, in, in well, the way we thank fund. Thank you for mentioning that. I think our time is up this time. Okay. But we will have a conversation again. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. It's been a delight. Thank you. This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by The Virginia Education Association. An investment in teachers today will pay dividends tomorrow. Dignity Memorial. The Dignity Network provides professional and compassionate funeral, memorial, cremation, and cemetery services throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia Hospital and Health Care Association for jobs, the economy, and public health. Virginia Tourism Corporation, promoting why Virginia is for lovers, lovers of wine and craft beers, the outdoors, beaches, history, music, and more. Fall in love with Virginia at virginia.org. Additional support provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you.